Yo, what is good everyone? So today I'm going to show you how I created this website using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So this one is a little different from my previous design because I utilize a lot more JavaScript in this website. So my previous one, if you've seen it already, it had like three lines of code or whatnot, but this one has closer to a hundred lines of code of just JavaScript. And I'll show you really quick what the design looks like right now. And then also the effects I use with JavaScript too. So Pretty much you can here see a standard hero section and I just added a bunch of gradient colors in this one, just messing around with random colors. And pretty much whenever I scroll, check out the nav bar once I start to scroll and you'll notice that it actually has this little, uh, little bottom border action going on and it's essentially telling you that, hey, we're on this particular section. So if I were to scroll down to the about, you can see that it actually is highlighted and this is essentially my about section. I don't have like the word, but just assume it's here. And then these are like just standard, just random like um, design you see on most websites. And then also note on anything with gradient, you can pretty much replace this with an actual image or SVG icon, whatever you want to. But I just use gradients just for a different uh, design here. And then also this would be like a service section and you can replace these with images, icons, whatever you want to. And then you can see here too, it actually follows and says, hey, we're on the services uh, position. So essentially it's scrolling and letting me know. And then here is essentially the sign up uh, section of my site. And this is the button. So it doesn't actually, I have a um, line of code where it doesn't display any sort of um, design on there. You can make it like um, add a class to here and like make it board or whatever. But since it's a button, I want to take it off. And then here we've got a typical footer down here. And then watch this cool. When I click on the actual uh, website logo, watch the nav bar when I click it on here that it will actually scroll back and looks like pretty cool effect there. And then instead of actually scrolling, you can also click on it too. So that's a cool little effect I wanted to add here. And you can see that everything updates like this. And then last but not least, when I actually shrink this over, you can see that we have a little tablet hamburger menu action. I'll click on this and then we have our menu like that. And then let me just shrink this a little more so you can see the responsiveness here. And so I'll shrink it like this. And then we got our typical card stacking on top with some grid action. And then we got the footer here. And then also if I were to click on the actual uh, menu and then like change it on to something else, it scrolls up and also it closes out. So that way you'll click it and doesn't like just leave it there. And then same thing with the um, logo here. And then last but not least, if I want to right click this and let's do inspect. And I can't make my screen like super small cause of the, uh, like the size of my computer, but let me just go to like Moto G4. And then let me just show you, this is what 360 by 640. So it's super tiny. And you can see that everything still fits in. It's nice and clean. And then I'll go down here, the footer too, you can see that. And then for all my, let's see, we got iPhone 5 SCers out there. Shout out to you and you can see that it still fits within these like tiny width phones here. And then also like if I click on the um, nav menu, you can see it's like that. And then last, let's last this, uh, let's do iPad Pro, it's a typical tablet and you can see there. So that's pretty much what we're going to create for today. So without further ado, let me hop into VS Code and let me show you how I made this. All right, so here I am on VS Code and I already created a folder to make this. So if you haven't, Go ahead, open up your code editor and then go and create a folder for this project. And over here, I'm just gonna simply click on this little new file icon and let's start off with the index.html. And then let's go ahead and make a new file again. Let's do styles.css and then let's click it one more time and let's just say app.js. All right, so now let's go to index.html and on my shortcut, I'm just gonna press shift one exclamation. And then when I press tab, I just basically boom is Emmett. Boom, we have it like this. And then title, we can just say this like, I don't know. Let's just say scroll website, just cause of the little scroll effect I have. And then let's go ahead and let's do a link to the style sheet. So under the title, let me just go and say link. I'm gonna press tab here. And then basically hrefs going to say the name of the CSS file, which is styles.css. And then let's go into our body section and let's go ahead and start creating the actual website design. So first things first is I'm going to create the nav bar. So let's do, I'm going to do command slash just to make a comment. You don't have to make these comments. I'm just doing it since um, 
I'm making this tutorial so you can actually see it better. But I'm just gonna say like navbar section. And in the navbar, let's see, what do we wanna have here? I'm gonna go ahead and create a nav and I'm gonna call it with the class of navbar. So in order from the shortcut, you can do nav dot and then say the class name, so navbar and press tab. And look at that auto creates for us. And then I'm gonna press enter here. And then let's create a navbar container. So I'm gonna say dot navbar underscore underscore container. And then when I press tab, it automatically creates a div with the class of navbar container because I didn't actually specify anything before the actual dot. So it just makes div by default. So I'm gonna press enter here. And feel free to name your class whatever you like to. I'm just doing it this way. And then for the A text, so let's create an A text. So I'm gonna say A, and then I'm gonna say for an ID, this one's gonna have an ID. So for IDs, you do a hashtag, and then I'm just gonna say navbar underscore underscore logo, press tab here. And then for the href, since we're using HTML CSS, this is the easiest way to do the little scroll effect. I know there's a way with JavaScript in terms of like scroll positioning, but I just wanted to make it easy on you, but pretty much, I'm gonna put the hashtag symbol or the hash, whatever you wanna call it, and then home is what I'm gonna call it here. And I'm gonna press Command B on my keyboard for Mac, not too sure on uh, Windows, but this closes out this like the file tab here so you can see it better. And then inside of this A, let's just say color. I'm gonna go ahead and save this for one second. And then what cool little tricks, let me reopen this. If you don't have this extension installed, go to this left section, extensions, and then just type in live server. And let me see, I think it's this one here. Go ahead and download this one by Ritwick Day. Click on this one, install it. And then a cool little thing we can do now is if I were to right click this and click on open with live server, guess what it's gonna do? It's gonna automatically open this website right there. And then also it has like live, um, like hot reloads. Let me actually see if I can, can I shrink this more? No, let me put this over here. So you can see it better. And if I wanna put like just random numbers, save it. Now you can see that it automatically updates without me having to uh, restart and everything. So let's just erase these numbers. And let me do command B. And now underneath this A tag, let's go ahead and create the actual, the nav bars, the icon you see with like the three lines, the hamburger menu. So for this one, I'm gonna have this in a div. So I'm just gonna say dot and then a class. So it'll be nav bar underscore underscore toggle and then it's also gonna have an ID so instead of having a press tab yet you can do shift uh, three so the hashtag and then do mobile on I'll just do mobile dash menu for this one and then press tab and you can see that it creates a class and an ID at the same time so super clean super easy and now in here this is ideally you want to put a icon but this is just a cool effect you saw the little animation if I go back like the way it like spins I used it like that. In order to do that, you have to create a little span bar. So I'm just gonna say span dot bar, press tab, and now I have a span of the class bar. And it's gonna leave it empty. And a cool little shortcut, if you do shift, alt, and the down arrow, and I press it, it automatically copies it down. So that's on Mac, I'm not sure on Windows, but um, pretty much that's what you do here. Or shift, I think that's shift uh, option on Mac, yeah. And then basically we're good and set. These are our three little hamburger bars here. And then underneath this div, press enter. And let me scroll up, you can see more. And now what we're gonna do is create the actual nav menu. So I'm gonna say UL, so in order to list, I'm gonna say dot nav bar underscore underscore menu, press tab, and we got the UL. So press enter. Now inside of this UL, let's create the actual list item. So I'm gonna say li dot and let's do nav bar underscore underscore item, class name, press tab, and then press enter. And then inside of the li, we're gonna do a h, well not a, my a tag. So I'm gonna say a dot, class name will be nav bar underscore underscore links. ID, let's do hashtag, let's just say home dash page. And then I'm gonna press tab here. So now it's gonna put me in the href. So I'm gonna put hashtag home. And then let me make this a little, yeah, just like that. And then inside of this actual A tag, let's just put the word home. So let me save this now. You can see we got a little home action going on here. And I click it, nothing really happens, okay. So now what we need to do 
is actually copy this. So instead of us writing us every time, basically copy the li with the a tag. So command C, and go underneath this, press command victory V. So that's one, and then two, and then three times, okay? So this second one, the class is the same. The actual href is gonna be about this time, so change the second one to about. Class name is still the same here. ID is going to be about page, and then this one's going to say about. And now for the li this one, this hashtag is gonna be services, and this is what I'm naming it. Name it whatever you're naming your websites. And then this ID is going to be services page. And then inside of the a tag, we're just gonna say, let's see, services. And then the last one, we have to actually change the class name. So this one's the button. So I'm gonna say navbar, or navbar underscore underscore btn href we're going to change this one to hashtag sign dash up class is actually just going to be button and then id is going to be sign up so let's do sign up and then right here is going to simply say sign space up save it here and then we've got our amazing little nav bar here so now let me do command b open it back up and let's start styling this so let's go to style.css and let's start adding some some fanciness to this. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is do the shift eight, the little asterisk symbol with the curly braces, and I'm gonna set these initial settings. So box sizing, border box, let's do margin of zero. Padding of zero, and if you watch the HTML CSS uh, tutorial, you've probably seen this like a million times. And then for the font family, let's just write this here. We're gonna actually import a Google font eventually, but for now, let's just say here, so font family and I'm just gonna keep this one as K-U-M-B-H-S-A-N-S and then comma sans serif. And then the actual scroll behavior, how I got to look clean and scroll smoothly, you have to add scroll dash behavior and let's just put smooth here. All right, so now we can good, we're good here. So I say this now you notice that everything's moved all the way to the corner because we took away the paddings and everything. So now I'll start actually styling this stuff. So let's do dot nav bar, curly brace here, and let's do background, colon, let's do hashtag 131313, height, let's do 80 pixels, display, I want it to be flex, and then let me show you. So I save this now, you can see nothing happening yet, but what I wanna do is basically have under display effects justify content, and I wanna make sure everything's centered. So now you can see on the right, it actually centered everything. And then align items will be center. And if you don't have display effects, these won't actually help you work, they won't work out for you. And then font size, let me just do 1.2 rem. So essentially, if you've never seen a rem before, default is 16 pixels, but you can actually update it and make it a different size. But by default, it'd be basically 1.2 times 16, is that's the size. As you can see there, they increased. Position, let's see, position, I want it to be sticky. The top, just make sure it's at the very top, so zero, and then Z index. I wanna make sure that this thing is above everything. So Z index, think of it like a dimensional, three-dimensional type where it's like sticking out. So we'll put just 999, some ridiculous numbers so that we know that it doesn't matter what I do on my site, it's always gonna be above the additional um, items in my actual website. And then let's do the nav bar container now. So dot nav bar underscore underscore container. Let's do display flex. And then let's do justify content space between. What this is gonna do is gonna add some spacing. And you can't really see it right now because we're um, on mobile, but eventually once I finish everything up, it's essentially gonna give like a nice little space action going on here. Let me just make sure the height is at 80 pixels. And then let's do Z index of one. And then let's do a width of 100%. So now you can see I had some um, differentiation to it. And then let's do a max width. So I want this to not span farther than 1300 pixels. And then let's just do margin. And let's see, I have for margin right, I have auto and margin left, I have auto. So top and bottom. So if you just do margin, it's essentially top, right, bottom, left. 
but if you were to do like margin that's right you could do like this so instead i want to do so top and bottom are the same so it's going to be zero and then left and right are the same so i'm just going to say auto so essentially these are first ones top and bottom second ones left and right if you just do margin and then let's do padding and it's the same thing so padding top bottom is zero and then left right will be 50 pixels save it here and then after that let's go ahead and target the navbar logo so right now we got nothing yet but let's just add some stuff so hashtag navbar underscore underscore logo because i put an id on it let me scroll up so you can see and let's do let's see background dash color will be hashtag ff8177 and this is a gradient so let's just go ahead and do background dash image and let's do linear gradient of two top let me close this command b so you can see better and let's do hashtag ff0844 zero percent and then hashtag ff B199, 100%. Now, if you don't like typing this out, there are websites where I got all of my ingredients. They, they just give you like a CSS, a copy. But let me just do this couple ones, first ones now, and then I'll do everything after. So let's do background size, let's do 100%. Now let's just do dash webkit dash background dash clip colon text. And let's do moz dash background dash clip colon text here and then let's do dash webkit dash text dash fill dash color colon transparent and then last one for this probably dash moz dash text dash fill dash color colon transparent again let's save it and let's check it out now we got a little gradient logo going on and then under here let's do display flex and then align items center cursor I wanted to have a little pointer when I hover and let's do text decoration to be none and then font size would be two rem so originally other designs I had like a little icon logo so this will like be nice and centered but since we don't have one for this then you don't have to worry about that but at least we'll have the settings there and then let's do nav bar menu now so dot nav bar underscore underscore menu curly brace let's do display flex let's do a line items to be center let's do list style to be none and let's save here so now you can see a little nav bar flex action going on and let's do we'll see the nav bar underscore underscore item i want that height to be 80 pixels say that here and then let's see let me scroll up more we got nav bar links so let me do dot nav bar underscore underscore links and do the curly braces let's say let's color these white so hashtag fff and then let's do display flex align items to be center let's do justify content center and then let's see let's do a width of 125 pixels and text decoration get rid of the little underline do none and then i want the height to fill 100 percent so it's nice and centered so now you can see we got a little cleaner looking nav bar here i'm gonna make it desktop view in just a second let me finish this up and then we can see the little masterpiece we made and then let's see we got um dot nav bar let's see underscore underscore btn curly brace I'm gonna go ahead and say display colon flex. Gotta justify content to be centered. Align items to be centered. And let's see, let's do padding zero one rem. So that's essentially 16 pixels. So that's top, bottom, zero, left, right, one rem. And then let's put the width at a hundred percent. And right now you can't see anything because the button is like way over here, but just know it's chilling, it's doing this thing. Now she style the button. All right, so here is where it actually goes and gets pretty crazy, but let's just do dot button, curly brace. I'm gonna say display flex. And I'm gonna say justify content to be center. 
and then let's just do a line items to be center text decoration to be none let's do padding to be 10 pixels top bottom left right 20 pixels height so let me scroll this back up I want it to be a hundred percent let's do width to be a hundred percent border is none outline is none border dash radius is for pixels and let's do background so this is where it gets fancy so let me write it out first for you and then let me show you a site that I actually got these because in case you don't have um you just don't want to go to the site basically you're gonna say background colon and this is essentially like a fallback so if the gradient doesn't pop up this will just replace it so it'd be hashtag 833ab4 and then we're gonna say background colon dash webkit dash linear dash gradient so I just press tab autofills and then we're gonna say to right comma then hashtag fcb045 comma hashtag f d1 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 comma and let me see Did that mess something up f d1 d1 so just replace the last it should be just six one two three four yeah so f d1 d1 d and then last one be hashtag a three three a b four all right so now if i see if i save this here it's quite crazy long but um then I press enter again and basically let me actually go let's do go back to this line do uh shift alt or shift option down arrow and then let's update these again so let's do um this one we'll just straight up say erase the web case you're gonna say linear gradient and then pretty much we just keep everything here and then let's do underneath this one let's just say color to be white so hashtag ffff and let's make a transition. So transition to be all 0.3 S ease. Save it here. And now you can see we got a little button action. All right, so that is how you manually type out the gradient. But let me show you this side here. So this one's called UI gradients. I think there's like a couple if you type in uh, just like gradients online. And if you click show gradients, it'll show you like all these different fancy gradients, right? And I think, uh, can I search? I don't think I can search, but let me see. I can't. I think this one was called literally called Instagram, but I can't. I don't know where it's at. But anyway, so pretty much, let's just say you want to pick a gradient. Like, okay, this one be the sunset looking clean. You click it, and then you go to this little like uh, get CSS thing right here. You click it, and then it basically tells you copy. You just click copy, and then if I were to go back, and basically if I um, all right, that's not that right here. I can just straight up copy and paste this into our code and save it and you can see it's literally it changed the button color but I'm gonna use the original one I think that one looks cleaner but I mean it just it's gradient but you have the point so if you don't want to send and type it out just go to that website and just straight copy paste it boom you're done and I, I think there's another site too so there's other sites that have different gradients but that one is just one of them and now let's continue finishing up our navbar we're almost done let's do some hover action now so let's do under the button dot navbar underscore underscore links colon hover and let's just say color hashtag let's see what nine five one eight fc and let's do transition position let's do all 0.3s ease and then let's do dot button actually no we'll keep the button we don't need actually this so let's just save this first and let's just see what happened so you can see here we got a little purplish action going on and then let's start editing our media query and actually notice too one little trick if you notice when i hover over it it like it's like instantly so let's actually go copy this line of code go back to the nav bar links and let's add it there save it and let's see if it works so you can see it's more cleaner because it like it's almost like a bounce up down effect where it it transitions in and out if i removed it it's like instantly see how it's like instant and then i put it back so this is a way if you wanted to add like the effect where it's like nice and smooth and clean that's how you essentially do it you have to have a 
another transition on the original code and then one on the hover so it has like the nice clean smooth effect and now let's mess around with the media creator so let's do at media screen and max let's do dash with colon 960 pixels curly brace and let's do dot nav bar underscore underscore container and I'm I'm using 960 because of that breakpoint that's where I had issues with the design so I wanted to essentially do this once it hits this breakpoint so every website is different you might have different um, breakpoints but this one for this design does it so I'm gonna say display here I want to be flex just for my content let's do let's see space between and let's see let's do height will be 80 pixels Z index will be one I'll see width to be a hundred percent and I want to set a max width of 1300 pixels with padding of zero all right so let me just shrink this back again you can see what's going on so then under the nav bar container we're still in our media query let's target the nav bar menu so let's do dot nav bar underscore underscore menu and curly brace here and let's just say display to be grid grid template columns want that to become let's do auto let's do margin of zero let's see with a hundred percent position so this i'm using position absolute because of the um for the actual effect here, so let's do position, absolute. I want the top to be negative a thousand pixels because uh, this is the drop down effect. I mean, there's different ways to do this, but this way just works. And I just make sure that it's not showing. So in case you're like, what the heck's happening? Pretty much like the drop down effect. It's like weight of the top. And then when I tr click it on active, it will bring it down to whatever I set it. And you can't use top unless you have position absolute or you're just going to be frustrated why it's not working. And then let's do opacity. Let's make it one. And transition to be all 0.5 SEs with a Z index. Let's do negative one here. And now let's do a navbar menu active. So this essentially is the active menu so whenever you click on the icon it actually showcases that so let's do dot navbar underscore underscore menu dot active and when we trigger this i want the background of the mobile menu to be hashtag one three one three one three top is going to be a hundred percent let's do opacity to be one transition not transform to be let's see what I put all 0.5 SEs Z index to be 99 and then let's set a height I want it to be 60% of the viewport height so this has the view will be 60 VH and then font size will be 1.6 rem save that here and right now nothing is happening because we haven't toggled the actual nav menu. So essentially what's happening is it's basically negative 1,000%. So if I were to close this out, you can see like our nav, and if I put a background here, you can see it better. You can see our nav's right here, but since I have active set, it's basically gone. So that's pretty much, that's just showing you what it is. But let me just keep these here so, um, you can see the styling action we're doing and let's see let's do okay so under here let me bring this over so you can see what we're actually doing all right so let's do hashtag so the id nav bar underscore underscore logo i want the padding left to be 25 pixels because it's like all the way on the edge now we fix that and now let's do dot nav bar underscore underscore toggle space dot bar curly braces and now we're creating the actual hamburger menu now so let's do width to be 25 pixels 
height to be three pixels, margin to be five pixels auto, transition to be all 0.3s ease in out and background will be white and then let's go under here let's do dots nav bar underscore underscore item let's do a width of a hundred percent and then underneath that item let's do dot nav bar underscore underscore links text align to be center all right what happened clicked off then we got to see uh padding to be two rem width to be a hundred percent and i want the display to be table so now we got a little center action going on and let's see what else we got nav bar button so let's do here let me scroll up so dot navbar underscore underscore btn let's just say padding bottom to be two rem okay got a little, a little spacing right there let's do dot button curly brace display colon flex let's do just by content center align item center width will be 80 percent height will be 80 pixels and margin will be zero all right but it's a little thicker now looking at it right now and then let's see we got move menu so id will be hashtag mobile dash menu curly braces position absolute top 20 percent right five percent so if I say this right now, you can't see it because I didn't add this last line, transform, translate, 5%, comma, 20%. And I think it's actually hidden because of the um, the background. So you can see the, the mobile menu, so I'm going to uncomment this now so it goes away. And let me just close this out here. And we still cannot see our... Um, our menu so let me actually oh yeah i forgot this last line here so let's do uh let's do dot nav bar underscore underscore toggle and then space dot bar and let's do display block and cursor pointer all right there we go there's a little hamburger menu and now let's do the little effects so that it has a little animation so let's do hashtag let's see mobile dash menu dot is dash active space dot bar colon nth dash child parentheses of two so if you're like what in the world is this alien writing basically we're adding a class is active and essentially whenever we click it i want this to be toggled and then also on the bars nth dash child of two so i go back to index html this should be on like three lines, it's hard to see. But essentially, this is the first child, this is the second, and this is the third. And rinse and repeat, depending on how many you have. So I'm targeting essentially the second one, and I wanted to do a little cool spin, so that like if you see here, look at the second one. It spins and it goes like diagonally up, and then the top and the child one goes down, and then the third end child is just like bye-bye and disappears. So that's essentially what we're doing here. So now, I go back the second actually I think the second child disappears oh okay, let me see let's see opacity zero so that one gets disappears there and then let me just copy paste these let's do command C and then you can just change the child to one and then erase opacity and then just put transform colon translate what is that Y? Yeah, capital Y, parentheses, eight pixels, and then rotate 45 DEG, which is degrees. And then we can just copy this and paste it one more time. Change this to the third child, 
And I want to just put a negative sign in front of the translate and negative sign in front of the rotate. And then let's go ahead and save it. And now when you click it, guess what happens? Nothing because there's no JavaScript. So you want to add that. Let's see. Let's see what we got. Yeah, let's go ahead and add that. So let's do command B, add that JS, go to that file, command B here, and let's target the first thing. So let me just call this const menu. You can name this whatever you want. You can name this taco if you want to. And so you go to document dot query selector. And I'm using query selector instead of like ID or document dot get class, etc. Because it's just, I can have, always switch it. If I have a class in my, in this HTML, I can switch it easily just by putting a dot instead of a thing. So query selector. And what are we targeting? We're targeting the mobile menu. So it's going to be hashtag mobile dash menu. Now, where the heck is this? Let me come in B back. On the end of HTML, we put an ID right here on our actual hamburger menu. So I put ID so I can target with JavaScript. So right now we're targeting essentially this entire little icon thing we made right there. And then we're calling it the name menu. All right, you'll name it Taco Bell. I mean, name it Taco Bell too, whatever you want to. And then I want to target the actual nav bars, the uh, ULs, which are these guys right here. So what that is, is essentially, I'm just call this const, let's just say menu capital L links, equals document dot query selector, parentheses. And this one is actually a class. So for classes, you dot navbar underscore underscore menu, which is what we named the class. We we'll go back. You can see here, this is our UL. So essentially this entire div, it's called the class we have is navbar underscore underscore menu, which has all of our home about service, et cetera, buttons. And we're targeting it here and we're calling it menu links is the name of this. You wanna call this fried chicken? <laughs> call it that, but that makes more sense, call it menu links. And then we can actually toggle this so what we do now we have to write a function so let me actually see let's see um let me do comments so you can just ignore this coming by the comments to so just say display mobile menu now how are we gonna do that well we have to actually write a function that adds a class that we have either active or is active which is the ones we have in our css so let me just go back way down here we have this one that we want to trigger for the menu and then also for the actual uh, little animation effect, the class is, is active. So how are we gonna do that? Well, I wanna create a, I'm gonna essentially create an arrow function. So in order to do that, you just simply just say const, the name of your function. So by function, I'm just gonna call this mobile menu. And then obviously it's an arrow function. So we set that equal to parentheses with the arrow and then it curly braces here and then now so I want to write my actual code here so we have the menu which is targeting the actual menu section so what I'm going to do is say menu and then this is JavaScript we say dot class list and then I want to toggle so essentially it's like true or false true or false think of it like active not active active not active and for this one I want to toggle the class that we put, which called is dash active. And then underneath this, we have menu links, and I'm gonna say dot class list dot toggle, and I wanna set that to the class active. So essentially whenever I click the little icon, I want to toggle these two classes here. And then how do we even toggle this? Well, you have to actually add an event listener. So I'm gonna say menu, so now we're targeting the actual div of the uh, hamburger menu section, the icon. I'm gonna say dot add event listener, parentheses, and it takes in some sort of action. So this one's gonna be a click, and then I'm gonna say comma, and then I'm just gonna pass in the name of the function that we created up here. Now there's additional ways where people do like function, parentheses, and they do like this, and they write the logic there. But I already wrote my function above, so all I have to do is literally I just have to say mobile menu, press save, and everything works out. Right now, watch what's gonna happen. If you guessed it, I click it, nothing happened. You know why? Because I didn't import the script tag on the HTML at the bottom. So right, right before the closing body div, just do script 
and then let's do src equals to quotes app.js let's save and let's see if this works now so boom just like magic we got our little action right now and here nothing is happening because we haven't had the additional effect so if i click it like it doesn't close the only way it closes is if i put the x because that's the only thing we targeted in the javascript but as you can see for in terms of the first section i mean not too bad we're pretty much almost there just kidding we got a bunch to go but you can see here this is how it looks and then when i scroll it back we got a little nav menu here all right, so now let's go under this nav section and let's start editing our next one, which I just call this the hero section. So the main, the first one. So let me just spread this out a little bigger so you can see it. And I'm gonna put comma. So I do command slash to write a comma and I'm just gonna call this the hero section. And then let's go ahead and let's start writing our HTML. All right, so this one is fairly easy for the HTML. So let's just go ahead and let's do dot hero and then hashtag home hashtag home here press tab so we got the class of hero with the id of home and let's do hero container so let's do dot hero underscore underscore container press tab there scroll up a bit and then let's do the hero heading so i just call this h1 dots and let's just say hero underscore underscore heading press tab there and then I'm gonna say choose your, and then I'm gonna say a span tag here, press tab, and then I'm just gonna say color. So that's how I did the effect with like the uh, first part with like white and the second like gradient. And then underneath this H1 here, let's go and do a P tag with the class of, so dot hero underscore underscore description press tab here and I just put what unlimited possibilities and then underneath that we're gonna have a button with the class of main underscore underscore btn press tab there and then inside of the button I'm gonna have an a tag which is simply just gonna say a press tab Hrefs sure put a hashtag and then let's just put explore. Save it there and boom, hero section is done. Now we just need to add some styling to it. So this one shouldn't be too bad. But let's go to styles and let me go under here. Let me do command slash so we can add a comma. Call this the hero section. All right, so let's gonna do let's see dot hero curly brace background is let's see hashtag zero 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 so basically black here and then let's do background that's the fallback again so this one's going to be the linear gradient this time so linear gradient i'm going to say two rates hashtag one six one six one six Hashtag zero 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 and then done with that and then let's say padding should be 200 pixels by zero Save it. All right. Now we got something going on here uh, Now let's go under hero section Let's do dot hero underscore underscore container And let's do display flex flex direction column Let's do justify content center, align item center. Let's see, I want the max width to be, let's set that to 1200 pixels. Let's do margin zero auto. And so that one essentially makes it center, the margin zero auto. And then let's do height, let's just do 90% should be semicolon and I want the line so text align center I want my text to be center and I want padding to have 30 pixels so it has like a little spacing on the sides and you can see we got some progress everything's centered now hard to see it but it's there and now let's see we got the hero heading so let's just do this the um, dot hero underscore underscore heading 
curly brace here and let's just do font dash size to be 100 pixels margin dash bottom to be 24 pixels and then color to be hashtag ff all right so we got some size going on here and since it's on mobile i haven't had the media query it's kind of big but it shouldn't be that big on that size and then for the hero span let me actually let's see so let's do hero underscore underscore heading space span curly brace and this is going to be so essentially i got this from the same site i showed you right so i just clicked on like um like literally you can just click on this ibiza sunset and just copy this and I, this should work i mean i think it's a different one but it's, it's literally the same concept you save it here and then we go back and you can see that the background now is like this now if you're like oh, i don't know how to get this you can literally go back to the top where we did it up here just copy the background three lines and then just like delete these last two and change the hex codes to whatever matches mine or you just don't even have to put a gradient this is just preference here but basically what we need to do now is add the background dash size to be a hundred percent and then let's see dash webkit dash background dash clip to be text dash moz dash background dash clip to be text as well and dash webkit dash text dash fill dash color let's see transparent and dash mosh dash text dash fill dash color transparent as well save it now we got a little gradient color action all right so i think this one actually looks better than the one i had but it doesn't matter it's just gradient and then let's go underneath this one and let's see what we got going now so let's do dot hero underscore underscore description and let's see font size to be uh 60 pixels background yes yeah, so i think this is the same let me say let me show you how to save some time so just copy this i know these are just comments telling you like the different browsers for it so i'm gonna copy that one and then I'm just gonna update the actual hex code. So basically this is gonna be, let's see, DA22FF. This one, first one's gonna be 911F or 4FF. And then this one's going to be, let's see what, DA22FF. And then underneath these, let's see, erase that, it's gonna be 8 f 0 e f f and then this one's gonna be d a 2 2 f f and this is like a purple thing i mean you guys could really copy another gradient from the site and just pick a random one it doesn't really matter and let's just straight up copy this text here save us a bunch of time save it boom all right cool cool or you could just put like color purple <laughs> Same thing, but uh, trying to be fancy here. Let's do dot highlight. Let's do curly brace border dash bottom. Four pixels solid RGB one three two comma zero comma two five five. Save it there. And this this is our most important thing. This is the code that whenever we click and scroll on our nav actually is going to update with this little border bottom right here now let's add the mobile response in this so at media screen and max width make sure i have this be what 768 pixels let's do dot hero underscore underscore heading I want that to be font size of 60 pixels so you can see on the right actually shrunk and then we have the da hero underscore underscore description 
This one's gonna be font size of 40 pixels. All right, and then we're pretty much done with this. The other thing we need to do is actually edit the button and we're actually going to, let me see if I can put this somewhere else. Let me see. Yeah, we're actually gonna edit this in the next section because I use the same button for pretty much the other two. So let's just go and let's start creating that now. So let's go back to index and it's HTML. And underneath this, let's see, we got the about section next. So let's go under here. So I'm gonna do comment slash to make a comment. Just call this one the about section. And pretty much here is the main content. So I'm just gonna call this main you name is whatever you want to. But um, I could call this about too, it doesn't matter. But let's do dot main for the class with the hashtag of about for the ID. And then in here, let's do dot main underscore underscore container. And then let's do dot main underscore underscore image dash dash container. And then this, I called this image container just because originally I had images in it, but I just replaced it with um, straight up a gradient instead, just to like save up space and loading speed. But here, let's just do dot main underscore underscore image dash dash card. And then inside of here, we're actually gonna have a uh, icon, font awesome icon. So let's just put, let's just leave it blank for now. Let's just put like um, icon in the middle so you can see it. And then I'll save it right now. And you can see we got nothing going on yet. And then underneath this div here, press enter. And then let's do dot main underscore underscore content. And then h1, let's just say what, what do we do? Cause I don't know. <laughs> and let's go under here. Let's do h2, we help businesses scale and p tag would just be schedule a call to learn to learn more about our services and then under here i'm simply just going to write the button again so i can just copy this original one here get it and just paste it and change this to schedule call save it and I guess you got a little hero action going on so that's pretty much that and it's pretty much the exact same thing as the um, where is that the feature section so since we are here already now I know what let me do this later I don't want to confuse you guys let's just go back to styles Let's call this about section, AKA the main section, doesn't matter what you name it. And now let's start editing. So let's see, what do we have first? The first thing is the main. So let's do dot main, curly brace, background dash color. Let's see what, hashtag one, three, one, three, one, three. And then padding to be 10 RAM zero see what happened we got the main section okay and let's do dot main underscore let's see main underscore underscore container curly place display grid let's do grid template columns to be one fr one fr so essentially think of this as like two boxes side by side and they're equal in essentially dimension so it's spreading out essentially think of it like 50 50 almost and then align items. I want to make that to be centered. Let's do justify content to be centered. Uh, let's see, a margin. I want to center this too here. So there's margin zero auto. Height is going to be 90%. Z index will be one. Let's see, what else we got? Width to be 100%. Max width is going to be 1300 pixels. And what else we got? 
padding let's do zero top bottom left right 50 pixels save it let's see what we got now so now you can see it's like the one fr one fr grids and even let me see if i can expect this so you can see actually i can't see anything so <laughs> let me wait till i finished and you can see it let's see let's do dot main underscore underscore content color hashtag ff with a hundred percent and got some content color text now and then let's see what do we got here dot main underscore underscore content h1 and this was just a gradient so let's say font size to rem and let's see uh, let's actually go back up to yeah let's go here. I think I have it let me see if I have this I know I wrote this somewhere maybe I haven't got to that point yet oh yeah it's right here so go all the way back up to the hashtag navbar on the screen it's gonna logo and if you don't want to scroll up just do command F on your keyboard and just do hashtag navbar and you'll find it right there. And actually, wait, where, where were we just at? Oh, there's two? The heck? Yeah, go to the first one. Navbar is going to logo. And then basically go and copy all of this background moss transparent text. And then scroll all the way at the bottom. Or you can do a little hack. You see on the right side. Go like this. Now I'm at the bottom. And then just paste paste that in there and let's just update the colors. Let's just say background color to be F E three B six F and let's see, let's change this one to F F zero eight seven B and then this one's gonna be hashtag E D one A five two. And then let me go underneath this one, mods, and let's say text transform uppercase. And then let's just say margin dash bottom 32 pixels. Awesome, now I've got a little gradient action going on there. And now let's go, and this is a fun part. So let's do dot main underscore content h2 this time. And this one's very, very, very similar to the uh, ones above. Let me scroll back up and just copy this. Just go back to here description and just take. Oh, this should be Mars. Yeah. Take this tire background color with the Mars text. Command C. Scroll down and straight up. Before you paste, let's say font size for rem. And then we can paste that code in. Let's save it now. Now you can see you got some color action. So I think I have a different color on here. Uh, let's see, what did I put for this? Let's change this first background color to FF8177. To right, let's do what? 911. Yeah, 4FF, still good there. D2. Actually, yeah, I think I use the same one. All right, cool. That's yeah, so perfect, we're good there. Just the background color is different. And then, let's see, I have background size, everything. Okay, scroll down here. And then let's go underneath this one. And let's do dot main underscore underscore content p tag. And this one's just gonna simply be margin dash top of one rem font size, let's see, font size of two rem font weight of 700 and we got let's see what we got okay fonts bigger it's good and then main btn so this is the actual one now okay let's just do dot main underscore underscore btn curly brace font size will be 1.8 rem 
And now we actually got to scroll all the way back to, let's see, let me do command F and see if I can find this. Hashtag 833. Oh yeah, so do command F, hashtag 833. So if you copy the original gradient on the beginning button, or just type in dot button. So I just do dot B-U-T-T-O-N. And then way up here, we need this exact gradient. So let's see, this one right here. Copy this, go to the bottom, paste, and let's see, save it here. I'm gonna make sure we got the right one. Yeah, I think that's the right one. 83 FC, oh yeah, we're fine, doesn't really matter, it's gradient color. And now let's set the padding to be 20 pixels by 60 pixels, much bigger. Border to be none. Let's do border dash radius to be four pixels. Color hashtag FFF. And let's do margin dash top to rem. So spacing on the top, let's do cursor pointer. Got a little hand pointer action. And let's see what else we got. I want to say position relative transition all 0.35s and then align to be none. So it looks like, oh yeah, I need to actually do the, um, and we're adding position relative because we're gonna have a little hover effect too. So in case you're like, what the heck's going on? But now I'm gonna say dot main underscore underscore btn a tag because we gotta get rid of that little underline. I'm gonna say position relative. I'm gonna say z index of two color hashtag ff. So tell me we can get rid of this color because it didn't actually work. And then text decoration none. Boom, outline is gone. And it's down here too. Okay, so now you can see the button. Got it everywhere now. And this is the little hover effect we got. So I'm gonna say, let's go this up. Dot main underscore underscore btn colon after position absolute content. You need to make sure it's an empty string. If else, you're gonna have weird effects happening. I'm gonna set the top to zero the left to zero, the width to zero, and the height to 100%. And then I want the background to be hashtag FF1EAD, and then transition all 0.35S, and then border radius four pixels. So right now if you're confused, that makes sense because we actually, this stuff's kind of complicated, but basically this is a little effect to do the hover thing. So once I show you, once I have the hover, then you'll see what happens. So let me fix that. Let me add that right now. Let's do dot main underscore underscore btn colon and hover. And I want to make sure the text maintains white. So hashtag FFF. And oh, what happened? Hashtag FFF semicolon. And then I'm gonna say dot main underscore underscore btn colon hover colon after. I want the width to be 100%. Let's save it. And now you can see a little slide over animation action going on here. We still got a menu broken. Okay, cool. And then also we got the sketch recall here too. So now let's start editing additional things. So right now, let me see if I scroll over and see we don't have the actual gradient car. So let's go ahead and edit that too. So now I'm gonna say dot main underscore underscore IMG dash dash container. Let's say text dash align to be center. And let's do dot main underscore underscore IMG dash dash card want the margin to be 10 pixels, want the height to be 500 pixels, width to be 500 pixels, 
border radius to be four pixels. Let's do display flex, flex direction column. Let's do justify content center and then color hashtag FFF. And then let's set the background dash image to just be a linear gradient of two right comma hashtag zero zero d b d e zero percent comma hashtag f c zero zero f f one hundred percent and let's add a semicolon and save and let's see there we got a little card action awesome all right so now we need to add actual icons so let's see let's go and edit this stuff so let me scroll this back over and let's head over to font awesome all right so now i'm on font awesome so if you don't want to use icons then you can ignore this but in case you haven't already go ahead and create a font awesome account and then click on the little icon here and then go to font awesome cdn and it'll lead you to this page and then simply just copy this right here and then let's scroll this back and then go back to your index.html file so click here and then let me go right below our styles.css just paste that cdn in save it and now what we can do is actually go into our uh, let's see where's it at let me go back to our site so you can see what happened go into where's that icon here where we have icon and then we can just add in a class. You can never use Font Awesome. Basically, you can just search up icons and just copy and paste them. But for this sake, um, where's it at? Oh, ah, yeah. Here's the icon I have. Essentially, erase icon and then just do, or you can just test I and press Tab. And then basically, in the actual class, set that equal to FAS space FA dash layer dash group and then just hit save and you can see a little tiny icon here so now let's go back to styles.css and then I'm gonna set all right under here I have I'm gonna have another icon we're gonna add it eventually but let's just put it here for now so fa dash layer dash group comma and then the next one is fa dash users curly race here let's just say font size um, 14 rem and see it's ginormous it's not perfect right so that's what i want to have here and then for the second we're actually going to have um let's see let me go back and make sure because if i go back here all right yeah that's what we got going on right now so let me see if on the actual so we're actually gonna have another card so since we're here let's just write it out for now it's gonna have an idea of hashtag card dash two and then literally I'm just gonna copy this to see let's see go up to just copy this random gradient here and let me just paste it down and then let me just change some of the colors so this one is gonna be ff five one two f and this one actually we can delete let me goes up you can delete this third color here. Oh, what happened? Delete that third color. And then the second one will be, let's see, DD2476. And then I'm going to change this one to, let me get rid of this comma. I'm going to say FF512F. And then the bottom one, let's get rid of this last color here. Get rid of, it should be these still. So let's get rid of the second one here. Let's just erase this and just say FF512F. And then for this one, let's just say um, DD2476. And we haven't created this card yet, but that's the next, I think that's the second and last section. So we'll have it there just for now. And then let's start adding, let's put um, more responsive. This is just a comment, you don't have to type this. But now let's actually write the mobile responsiveness. So here I'm gonna say, let's see, at 
media, actually, yeah, media screen and max dash width 1000, so 1100 zero, zero pixels. I'm gonna say dot main underscore, yeah, main underscore underscore container curly brace. I'm gonna say display colon, let's do grid. Let's say grid, let's see, grid template columns. I want that to be 1FR, align items to be centered, just by content center. Let's see, we got width to be 100%, margin colon zero auto, and then height will be 90%. So right now, you can see you got a little column one FR action going because it stacks on top. And then we say dot main underscore underscore image img dash dash container display flex just by content center. And then I want the main underscore underscore image dash dash card to be height of 425 pixels with the width to be. 25 pixels so it's like a little smaller so you got a little side action going and then let's see we got dot main underscore content let's say text align center let's see you scroll over here now it's like this let's save it here text align center let me say margin dash bottom to be four rem. And then under here, let's do dot main underscore underscore content h1. Want the font size to be 2.5 rem. Then margin dash top to be two rem. And then let's do dot main underscore content h2. Font size gonna be three rem, and then let's do not main underscore underscore content of the p tag. Let's do margin dash top of one rem, and then font size will be one point five rem. And let's save that here. So far is what it looks like, and then for the smaller screens, let's just do add media screen and and max dash width of 480 pixels and let's do dot main underscore underscore img dash dash card let's set the width to be 250 pixels and let me scroll up and then let's set the height to be uh, 250 pixels and let's see, okay. And then I want to have the under here, let's do f dot fa dash users and then comma dot fa dash layer dash group. So these are icons, I want them to be smaller, so let's just say font size for rem and then dot main underscore underscore content h1 font dash size to be two rem and then margin dash top to be three rem and let's just go ahead and copy the h2 and the p tag from above let's paste this here let's change the h2 to be two rem the p tag margin top be two rem font size is the same so tell you can just leave that fine like this and then uh, let's see dot main underscore underscore btn I just wanted that to be padding 12 pixels by 36 pixels and then margin 2.5 ram 0 and I think we're set in terms of mobile responsiveness and everything so now let's go back and let's go ahead and Let's do the services section now. So we'll go in as HTML under here, command slash 11. 
and we close it and let's just say services section here and basically we're gonna say div of services with the hashtag of services so what div class and ID and here I'm gonna have an h1 that says our services and then let's do dot services underscore underscore wrapper press tab here and then we have dot services underscore underscore card and then I'm gonna have an h2 which say let's see custom colorways then under the h2 is gonna say p so ai powered technology and then underneath that I'm gonna have dot services underscore underscore btn and then here's gonna have a button that just simply says get started and now we can go ahead and copy the services card div with the h2 the p tag and the services button and then underneath that card but still in the services wrapper just paste it one two three times so you have four now and then basically we can change these so let's just say um are you ready and let's see we gotta take the leap and then here let's do a full gradients and do see what we got 100 combinations and then last last one will be just infinite choices and it's gonna say thousands of color i just made up random text here we're pretty much good now with the services HTML. So now let's go ahead and style this. So go over to the style CSS all the way under here. And let me comment and just say service section. Now under here, let's do dot services background to be hashtag where is it? 131313. Uh, let's do display Column flex, flex direction column. Let's do justify content center, align item center, height to be a hundred percent with a padding of ten round of zero. So now you can see we got a little section here, and then under here let's do dot services h1. And this is basically a linear gradient, so let me just go and command F really quick. Let me just type in WebKit. Yeah, here we go. So the navbar logo. I'm just gonna copy this background color, everything, and then scroll all the way to the bottom. Back to where we were at. And let me just paste this in here. Let me change this background color to FF8177 and then let's change this to top to two right and this one has some crazy color on here so let me just say this for now see what this looks like yeah I mean it, at this point it doesn't really matter I don't really care too much about the color too much but um yeah let's just make it like that for now just save some time and then let's just do a margin dash bottom to be 5 rem and then a font size to be 2.5 rem and we can save it now we got a little services section right there so now under the h1 let me see let's do a dot services underscore underscore wrapper let's say display grid let's say grid template columns so I want four columns. I'm gonna say one fr, one fr, one fr, one fr. Then I'm gonna say grid template dash rows one fr. And then underneath here, let's do dot services underscore underscore card. I'm gonna say margin ten pixels. Heights to be four twenty five pixels. 
width to be 300 pixels, border radius to be four pixels, display flex, flex direction, I want this to be a column, justify content center, color, hashtag FFF, background, image so let's do background dash image linear gradients two right comma hashtag zero zero d b d e zero percent comma hashtag f c zero zero f f one hundred percent and then let's do on um, transition 0.3 SE's dash in. So let's see if anything happened. So right now you can see we got a little gradient action going on right now and nothing's happening yet. But basically, let me see if we go down. We're gonna have our next one. So dot services underscore underscore card hashtag nth dash child of the second one now the second container and you can literally go to the site and just go and pick like a bunch of colors so the UI gradient site it's UI gradients .com, and just click on random colors I mean literally just click on them and just paste them in here so like, I'm gonna click on stripe get CSS copy this and then basically you just go paste you can see got another color here and then let's go to let's copy this again and then let's just say nth child of three and now let's see this one I have a specific color for this one so that was another website I used called web gradients that also works too but again these are literally just example purposes so it doesn't matter but I'm just copy it in here you can see if you want to pause it and copy that you can write that down so that's the third one again these are just really doesn't matter for this part but yeah, that's pretty much what i have it like that i just kept the fourth one just the same just to save like time but pretty much you get the point and then let's do dot services on going to score card h2 let's say text align to be center and then underneath here let's do dot services underscore underscore card of the p tag what happened i'm gonna say text align to be centered margin dash top to be 24 pixels font size to be 20 pixels and then under here let's do dot services underscore underscore btn for button display flex just like content center margin dash top 16 pixels and that's do dot services underscore underscore card then button so now we're targeting the actual button side of there see color hashtag FFF let's do padding 14 pixels by 24 pixels Let's do border to be none, outline to be none, border dash radius, four pixels, background to be hashtag one three one three one three, font size to be one round. And then let's do dot services underscore underscore card button colon hover I want to have the cursor pointer and then the last one before the media queries would just simply be dot services underscore underscore so the two underscore card colon hover and let's do transform scale 1.075 transition 0.3s ease dash in and then cursor pointer 
All right, so now let's set before the new careers and let's check out what we got. So this is what we got going on now. I put a lepo. <laughs> Take the lep. Lepo. All right, it doesn't matter for here. We got serious simple design, nothing fancy. And then again, you can replace these with images. So if you want to know how to do that, you just literally, where is it at? Yeah, you just put an image tag in here. I just believe that's it. Is that simple? And now let's go ahead and add a media queries. So let's say at media screen and max width 1300 pixels. And I want to set the dot services underscore underscore wrappers. Wrap up with the R. I'm going to say grid template columns. And I only want two now. So one FR, one FR. So before I hit save, you can see how it's like four. Or it's not only showing three right now. But I save it. Now you can see they two. So essentially one column here, one column here. And then under here, let's do add media screen and max width of 78 pixels. Let's do dot services underscore underscore wrapper grid template columns if we want FR. So now even shorter, now we're only one column. All right, so cool there. And that shows you like simple ways to use grid. And then the bottom is going to be the footer CSS. So um, let's call this footer CSS. Before, let me save this now. Let me go back to NS HTML. And I basically want to add the feature section for the footer. So underneath our services cards, let's just say features section. And then I scroll here. And basically highlight this code here command C and then scroll all the way back down paste this and now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna re reverse this so essentially first thing is change the about to sign up so this is like our sign up now we're, we're a little we'll move to this section when we click the sign up button and then what you need to do is pretty much get this main content highlight all of it command X and then inside of this main container right here go underneath it and there's paste and then you save and I have pretty installed too if you don't have that go to extensions type in prettier prettier so you wonder like why am I how am I saving things in like auto formats that's this right here and there's a bunch of videos showing like how to make it customized but that will be that for another video. Alright, what happened? Oh no. Okay, yeah. So now if we scroll down underneath this card section, we basically have a similar actually yeah, before we do that, change this icon name to FA dash users and change schedule call to right here the a tag for the button to sign up put the um h1 let's change that to join our team h2 can be sign up today and then here it'll just be um see what makes us different I think I put up again in the original sign, but okay. So now if I make this desktop view, you can see like it automatically filled the styles. But pretty much, I think I forgot one thing too was add, go back, because I want it to be the same color. The card, main image card, after the class, add ID equals to quotes dash card two. Save it. And there we go. Okay, perfect. All right, so now we got different colors. So pretty much now we got majority of the side minus the uh, footer. So you can see it's like this. And then also the font. We haven't imported the font either, but you get the point. And now let's finish up with the footer, and then we can go to the fun stuff, which is JavaScript, and add all our fancy effects.
All right, so the footer section shouldn't be too hard. Basically, we're gonna do footer section. Now I'm gonna say dot footer underscore underscore container. Under here, I'm gonna say dot footer underscore underscore links. And then let me scroll up. Let's say dot footer underscore underscore link dash dash wrapper. And then in here, I'm gonna say dot footer underscore underscore link dash dash items. And then here, I'm just have an H2 that says about us. Underneath them, I have an H tag that simply just says slash sign. I'm gonna put it. Yeah, sign dash up. And then push put how it works. Then here, I can just hold shift down and just basically copy and paste this. And then you can change this one to like um, testimonials. And then here you can change this one to careers. And then here you can change this one to terms of service. Now, all I need to do now is literally copy and paste this. So highlight the footer items div and then all the a tag aside and then just paste it below. So we're still in the footer wrapper and then one and then two. And that's pretty much it in terms of the actual thing. Only thing you do now is, let me see, I have another thing underneath this, but let me add it after. But right now you can see this is our footer and they're all the same thing. So you can go in here individually, change the headings and then the actual insides. But since I already have mine coded out, I don't wanna waste time like individually uh, typing all that stuff out for you. So let me just go ahead and let me see. Let me paste this. And one thing I forgot to do, this is the big mistake every time, is make sure after the, here's the first footer link wrap, then you have your second footer link wrap, put a closing div tag for the actual, um, just put a closing div tag because you want the footer link wrapper to wrap around only two. So now underneath that second one, we gotta do another one. So dot footer underscore underscore link dash dash wrapper. And then command X and then paste this one right below here. So now you can see we have two wrappers. Here's one and then here is two. So now I'm gonna go ahead and actually paste mine from my original code so that we can actually save some time and basically it's just gonna have like the customized um, footer text. We paste that here, save it, and you can see I just have all this here. And then underneath the, uh, let's see, social media, we got this div, then the wrapper div, and then we have this third div, which is the footer links. So underneath there, I'm gonna press enter. So we still have, let's see, footer container, We're still inside the footer container. And basically, let me see, what's this last div go to? Actually, I shouldn't even be there. I'm not even sure where that last div. I think I have an extra div. Not sure where that div came from. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, so now this one is pretty much the social media links. So let's just go ahead and just write this out. So let me say, let's see what I do. Section dot social underscore underscore media, press tab. Let me say dot, let me scroll up social underscore underscore media dash dash wrap and then let's see dot footer underscore underscore logo and then here i'm gonna have an a tag with the hashtag id so footer underscore 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 logo hrefs should be a slash 
And then here, let's just put um, the name of our website, which is called just color. And then underneath this div, press enter. We have a p tag dot websites underscore underscore rights. Press tab. And I think it's, let's see, I think it's option G. Yeah, option G on Mac. Something that's all G on Windows, and then it just makes the copyright sign. Then say color 2020 dot, and then say all rights reserved. And then underneath this P tag, I'm gonna press enter, and then we're gonna have the social icons. I'm gonna say dot social underscore underscore icons. Press tab, then A, I'm gonna have dot social on social underscore underscore icon dash dash link and then press tab here and then the slash is simply going to be a slash here and then we'll simply just put the Facebook icon so it's going to say I press tab and then inside the opening tag I'm going to say class equals to FAB space FA dash Facebook save this here and then I can simply just copy the a tags over and over so simply here take this a tag press enter press enter press enter press enter so we have Facebook next one let's just change this one to Instagram and then let's change this one to YouTube Let's do Facebook is um, LinkedIn, and I think did I put another one? Yeah, Twitter. Twitter's the other one. Twitter, and then also since these are icons linking to something off, if you go into like the A tag, we have to put target equals to underscore blank in order to make it open in a new tab. So just note that if you want to do that, that's how you'd have to do it. And you just add that to every single tag. And then pretty much should be set. So let me check below. So now you can see way down here, we got a little icon. And I think, yeah, we got all five perfect. All right. So now let's see. I got the div, div section, and then a div, and the script. All right, perfect. So now let's go to style.css. And then let's edit the footer CSS. All right, so the first one, let's do footer underscore underscore container. And let me scroll up and let's just do background dash color to be hashtag 131313. Let's do padding 5 RAM 0. Displays flex. Flex direction column. And then let's do uh, justify content center. And then align items center. And then let's go under here. Let's do hashtag footer underscore underscore logo. And let's say color hashtag FFF display flex align items center cursor pointer text decoration none font size two rem so far nothing's changed too much and then under the photo logo let's do dot footer underscore underscore links let's say width a hundred percent max width I want it to be a thousand pixels display flex and then just by content center and then underneath here let's do dot footer underscore underscore link dash dash wrapper and let's just put um display to be flex and then right here let's do dot footer underscore underscore link dash dash items let's say display flex flex direction column let's do a line items that starts or flex star I bet 
select start and then let's do margin of 16 pixels text align want that to be left let's do width to be 160 pixels and then box sizing to be border dash box so we'll see what's going on right now so now it has a little little frame to it and then now we can go ahead and let's target the h2s so i'm just going to copy this class here say h2 and then simply just say margin dash bottom of 16 pixels and then let's check it out here and then let me just say color to be hashtag ff and then we can do let's see dot footer underscore underscore link dash dash items a let me say color to be hashtag ff text decoration to be none and then margin dash bottom to be 0 0.5 rem and then let's do dot footer underscore underscore link dash dash items of a colon hover and simply you can change the color to e9 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 with a transition of 0 0.3 ease dash out and then also i'm gonna put it on the main so that we have little like bounce effects and i can see we got a little hover action it's kind of hard to see but it's there and then let's target target the uh, social icons now. So this one is let's see dot social underscore underscore icon dash dash link. Let me just say color to be hashtag FFF font size to be twenty four pixels. And then dot social underscore underscore media. Let's say max width to be 1000 pixels, width to be 100%. And then underneath here, let's do a social underscore underscore media dash dash wrap. Let's put display, display flex, just like content space between. Let's do a line items to be center and then let's do a width of 90% and then let's do max width to be 1000 pixels and then margin will simply be uh, 40 pixels by auto zero auto and then underneath the wrap I'm do dot social underscore underscore icons this Display flex, just like content space between, align items, center, and then width to be 240 pixels. And then let's do dot social underscore underscore logo. And actually, let me see if I even have, um, actually, no, we don't even have, yeah, I think I removed it earlier. So let me just check this everything down here all right so, so far everything's good so we just need to do website rights now so let's do um that website underscore underscore rights just say color hashtag ff and in terms of the footer everything is clean the only thing is it's not mobile responsive but you can see we got this here so now let's make it mobile responsive so at media screen and max width of 820 pixels this is the break point where I had mine doing it, so I just did it there. I'm just gonna say, let's see, um, dot footer underscore underscore links, padding dash top to be two rem, and then let's see, hashtag footer underscore underscore logo is not actually we don't think don't even have a footer logo check. Yeah, we did. Okay logo this will be margin underscore underscore actually i'm not underscore what i'm doing margin dash 
bottom to rem and then underneath there we'll see that website underscore rights margin bottom of to rem and then we have dot footer underscore underscore link dash dash wrapper that's gonna be flex direction of column And then let's do dot social underscore underscore media dash dash wrap flex direction column. And then the last one on the mobile for 480 pixel add media screen and max dash with 480 pixels. Let's do dot footer underscore underscore link dash dash items margin of zero padding of 10 pixels and then a width of 100%. And now you can see we have our footer. Perfect. So now what is next? Here is the fun stuff. So right now everything clicks. And everything goes. The only problem is we don't have our fancy although the original site. We don't got a little animation. We don't got the JS right here. So this is the part that makes it way cooler and way more fun to build. So now let's go and edit that. And also when you click on the menu, um but they don't exit. So you gotta write those functions here too. So let me command B. Let me go to at the JS and let's get started all right so this one's gonna be quite quite interesting all right so if you never did javascript that much then this video will be really helpful but if you already know javascript then this should be a good refresher so let's see one thing i want to do is i want to bring in some things here so i'm going to bring in the cons it's going to be our nav bar logo so i'm going to say nav logo I'm going to that equal to document dot query selector and I'm going to target the ID of navbar underscore underscore logo. And now let me go under here and now let's do the highlight menu first. All right, so this one's not too bad, but okay, basically I'm going to create a function. So let me just say, let's see, let's see what I'm going to do. Um, show active menu when scrolling all right so here let's create a function so i'm going to do an arrow function and i'm just going to call this one um highlight menu so let's just say const name of the function will be highlight menu so then you go to an arrow function with the curly braces and pretty much here i have to actually target all of the menu so like home about services so we go to the top that? i got these ids home page about page services page and sign up so right now i don't think i have to target sign up yeah so only these top three so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say cons and also i need to target the actual class highlight so that's the little active border we have created in the CSS earlier. So I'm just gonna call this like LM, short for like, I don't know, it doesn't matter, you name it to everyone to element, whatever. And then I'm gonna say document dot query selector. And now I'm gonna target the highlight class. And then next, let me just copy and paste these. So I'm gonna say shift all down arrow. So I'm gonna say home about services. So basically there's three. So this first one here, let's change this one to, I'm gonna name this home menu name whatever you want to and then in the query selector i'm gonna have the id of home dash page for this one this one's gonna be about menu and then the query selector is gonna be targeting the hashtag about dash page and then we have the services menu and that's gonna target the hashtag services dash page so again these are these IDs on the nav that we created earlier right here just in case you're not getting it and then what I need to do is I have to essentially have a scroll position 
that shows me what we're actually positioned at. So this one, I'm gonna call this let, and then I'm gonna say scroll POS, just for scroll position for short. I'm gonna set it equal to window dot scroll of Y. So right now, if I were to console.log this, you would basically be able to see the positioning, but I already did this earlier. So let me actually, let me see if I can, um, I don't think it's gonna run yet because it's gonna have some errors. So let's actually do, let's write the logic first and then we can do the console log after I'll show you how I did it. But let's do here and this pretty much adds the highlight class to my menu items. So right now this is the logic we're gonna write and this is the way I wrote it and it's just easy to read. But feel free to refactor it, make it cleaner. Let me know how you did it in the comments below. But basically, we're gonna have if statements, if else, whatever you want to call them. Say if, and then we're gonna say window dot inner width. And the reason I'm doing this is because I wanted to only display the uh, the highlight when it's on a desktop view on mobile. I don't want the mobile app to show the highlight, so I want to make sure. If the width of the window is greater than 960 pixels, so meaning my first breakpoint was at like around 960. So pretty much the minute you see the hamburger menu, I don't want this class to work anymore. So I have to make sure it's greater than 960. So once it hits right there, right when you can see the actual menu navs, I want this, this um, highlight class, the little hover effect to work only at that point. Anything after here with the mobile style, I don't want it to work. So that's this first line here. And so we're gonna do the double and. So I need this and I want the scroll pause, which is again, this is the window to scroll. I want our positioning to be less than 600. Now you're wondering how do I get this number? I'll show you guys at the end. But basically when you console the log, the um, scroll, uh, window to scroll Y, you can see like what pixels are, are at particularly when you're scrolling on your website. So again, it's gonna be different on your design, but for mine, I have that 600 pixels, which is pretty much, like, let me show you the main one. As long as I'm, once I get to here, so once I get past 600 pixels, it switches to about. So right there, you see that? So like, you could do it like here, or here. I did it a little earlier, cause on like, at the very bottom, it's like right here where it's touching, like right there, that's like 700 or something pixels. But I wanted to do like down here, right there, because like I'm not on home anymore. I'm pretty much like on the next section. So that's just what I'm doing right here. So that's that line right there. And then if that is true, then I want to target home menu. And then I want to add a class. So you say class list dot add. And I want to add the class highlight. But the thing is, when you do this, you end up, when you scroll past the about section, it ends up adding it to, and then you scroll past the um, the next section, it ends up adding it to as well. So for this one, I wanna make sure I have the about menu now I'm targeting, and I'm gonna say class list dot remove. I'll remove the class from the about. So when I scroll back up, let me show you. When I scroll from home down to sign up, back up, right now, right when I get to home, you see how it disappears? So it removes the class from about and then it adds it to the home. So you see that? Like that. That's what this client code is doing right here. And then I'm gonna return, because if you don't return, we have essentially an error where you have the click, because I'm also gonna have it where you click it too. And then if you don't have the return, it's, it's gonna look really weird and mess up your code. So make sure you return it. And then, else if, let me just copy this um, this logic here, this parentheses. The window width still gonna be the same, but I wanna change the scroll positioning to um, 1400. The curly brace here. And then now I wanna target the about menu. Then I wanna add the class list.add highlight now because now we're in the about menu section and then what I want to do is I want to do the home menu dot class list 
dot remove and I want to remove the highlight class from the home and then also the services menu too I want to do class list dot remove the highlight class here too so I want to make sure that only the um, the about menu has the class highlight everything else is removed so it doesn't matter where I scroll and then I just simply return here and then uh, copy let me just copy and paste this basically because it's pretty similar and then else if window less than 60 and then the scroll for the services is gonna be two three four five about menu class list we're gonna change add to remove home menu and keep actually we're gonna delete home menu because it's when you scroll back up it essentially removes it in there where when you pass about it removes it so it's essentially clean and then services menu let's do add actually yeah let's do add and then let me make sure let me bring this one as the first one just to make sure so I just change it up there and then returns and right now this works but the problem is the element I don't want it to actually keep it on here so let me show you I'm gonna say if and then our little element the highlight class and the highlight class so elm and window dot dot inner width is less than 960 and the scroll positioning is less than 600 or element is true then I basically want to do elm dot class list dot remove of highlight so essentially this when you do the click to you notice it that it essentially when I click on the uh, the icon here actually let me show you like you click here it switches it here too then also when I go to the, the mobile nav you can see that we don't have our little icon which is perfect and then at the bottom in order to actually get this to uh, work so actually can I zoom out it's kind of let me zoom out for a bit Let's see if you can still see this but basically now what I want to do is how we can actually trigger this so in order to trigger this we need to actually call this function highlight menu because right now nothing's doing it so in order to do that we got to say window dot add event listener so let me zoom back in event oh what happened event listener and what we're going to do is we're going to listen for two things first one for this one is going to just be a scroll and then i want to call the highlight menu that we just created and then i'm going to hold shift down arrow copy paste this and next i'm going to have a click so i want both to happen so essentially scroll and click so let me go to our main again and let's see if this actually worked. So now you can see scrolling and it's working. Everything's still fine here like this. Now let me make sure if I click on home. Okay, so now so far everything looks good, but the problem is now is whenever we click on the actual uh, mobile menu it see how it's still here we need to get rid of that and then before i continue let me let me show you how i got these scroll wise in case you're wondering so go back up to the highlight under the scroll position i just console.log scroll position so pos and then do command shift c on your keyboard open the console let me just show you go to responsive and let me drag this out all right so so right now you can see, actually, maybe a fifty percent. Now you can see right here, the minute I scroll, look at the console; it's updated. So like, right about, look at my nav bar right here is about six seven hundred. So I set it to be about here, and then it switches to about. So you can see here it's around six hundred ish, and then it switches to about up here, and then when we keep going, it gets to our services section, which is about like sixteen. 100 ish give or take and if you go back to the code you can see I set it to be like 1400 because I want it to be a little earlier Because like right here 
we're like 13 and right at the bottom we finished off so I was like might as well put it there and then for the next one it's around like the 2400 mark and again if your site has a different design then you obviously have to create different um, scroll positionings but you can see the point so that's essentially how I came up with those numbers and how I got that and then you can see it's like 230, 245 or 2345 and then I just, let me just calm this out and now let's go ahead and let's do the um, click one too because if you notice um, let me show you if I click it it works as well but the problem is let me see but the problem is the mobile nav. So let's go ahead, let's write the code to actually make it to where when I click this, it actually disappears. So let's go ahead and let me just write this down here. Let me just say close mobile menu when clicking on a menu item. So here I'm just gonna say const hide mobile menu. I'm calling the name of this function. So that equal to parentheses. So you go equal arrow function. And now it's pretty similar to say const menu bars is equal to document dot query selector. And we're going to target the dot is dash active class. So essentially, if I click on the icon, then essentially I want this to close out the, um, the nav. So let me show you where this at, is active. So right now you can see this divs here. And then I go dot is dash active. You can see there's a little icon here. So I want to make sure I have menu bars targeted. And then pretty much what I'm going to say here, watch. So I'm going to say if the window dot inner width is less than or equal to 768 pixels. So you don't have to put pixels because it's just JavaScript. So you just say the number and the actual menu bars is true which basically means whenever i click on this it's open now so now it's an x and now the mat uh the nav menu is down so that means this is true now because it's active it's it's basically activated the class is active which is right here so if that's true i want to target and get rid of this fine the menu and then we say dot classless dot toggle is dash active. And I'm also gonna target the menu links, which again, if we go to the top, this is our nav bar menu, which is the UL, which is essentially this nav bar menu in the UL, which contains our home about services and sign up page. This entire div wrapping it and I'm going to do dot class list dot remove and the trigger for this one is active so the active is a class remember in the CSS that opens the nav from a thousand pixels so right now this is active not active active not active and then underneath here we basically have to uh, trigger this so I'm gonna say menu menu links yeah, menu links dot add event listener. And then you have the click event. And then I'm just gonna call the function so hide mobile mobile menu. And then I'm gonna do shift all down arrow again because right now if I save this, click it. See how it works right now? The one thing we're forgetting is the icon. I click the icon, nothing happens. So I have to change this to um nav logo which is what i call the nav bar logo up here which is again over this id here which is basically the word color i'll save that there now click it test everything's okay icons okay then also if i click here about services home sign up color how about highlights shrink it again make sure there's nothing there and then it looks like we're all set so this is the completed design that we created for today so if you did enjoy this video then definitely go down below and hit that subscribe button
give this video a thumbs up share this with your friends comment down below and if you guys are new to the channel i pretty much document myself learning code and just building projects sharing with you what i'm creating so if you did find some value in this let me know also feel free to refactor the code let me know alternative ways to uh, make this better or any cool effects you guys want to add to it and again i have the uh, source code in the bio too so in case you had some errors or anything all that stuff's down below and aside from that i will see you in the next video peace